We're just now getting the first video. Michael Sheen, hold your thought on the fifth one, but back to the first video being released there. Uh, if this is dated between October 9 and November 5, 2010, absolutely. Look at Osama bin Laden at that point. That was, what, some six, seven months ago. Uh, and given the age and the last time we'd seen him, he has uh, some dark hair there. It would clearly look as if he's been um, dyed. I know that NBC's Jim Miklaszewski, who's been at the Pentagon monitoring all this for us, is joining us now. Mick, what are we seeing here? Uh, well, what you're seeing is what has been described already, uh, one of several videos in which he's delivering uh, remarks uh, to, uh, and this one, it's not clear whether this is the first, uh, second, or third video, actually. Uh, but in most of these videos, because the audio is not provided, uh, it, just a description of what he was talking about has been provided to us. Uh, but one of them, as, as uh, uh, our producer, Courtney Cuby, has let everybody know this afternoon, afternoon. Uh, the one about the armoire puts mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden directly at the compound. And in fact, it has been seen in pre previous videos that have been released. Now, one of the most interesting videos, actually, is when Osama bin Laden is watching television and flipping through satellite channels mm -hmm. because he's trying to find video of himself. But in that video, you see him. He's in like a shawl or sweater of some kind. He's got a black cap on his head, but his beard is actually gray, as opposed to the blackened, dyed beard that you see in these pictures. So that video is probably more contemporaneous because the senior intelligence official here told us today that when bin Laden was shot and killed at that compound nearly a week ago now, his beard was in that same gray, not hmm. dyed condition. Hmm. So it appears that that video is probably more contemporary to any other. Now, these intelligence officials yeah. had some pretty revealing information, actually. Uh, first of all, they call this uh, the biggest, largest collection of senior terrorist mm. material ever seized in these kinds of operations. Uh, and in addition, uh, they, they found very noteworthy that when al-Qaeda confirmed the death of Osama bin Laden in a statement, they did not immediately name a successor, indicating that within the ranks of al-Qaeda, there's some turmoil actually going on about who they want, various factions within al-Qaeda, want to succeed Osama bin Laden. They're reporting that the traditional number two, as we've known him, Ayman al-Zawari, is not popular because, quite frankly, according to this U.S. intelligence official, he's a control freak. Huh. Um, uh, Bob Winder, I'm going to get to you in just a second, but on the heels of what Mick was just saying, Mick, as you stay with us, Evan Coleman, who really monitors all these jihadist websites, is one of our NBC terrorism analysts. Uh, does that come any surprise to you that Ayman al Zawahiri would not be the immediate number two successor? He was his number two man, Osama yeah. bin Laden's number two man. You have to know a little bit about the history of Dr. Ayman al Zawahiri. This is someone who really, you know, he managed to annoy a lot of people and frustrate mm -hmm. a lot of people. In fact, some of the most important sources that the U.S. has gotten from inside of al-Qaeda, turncoats, we've gotten because of the fact that these guys got very frustrated with Ayman al-Zawahiri. Zawahiri was paying higher salaries to people in al-Qaeda who were of Egyptian origin versus non-Egyptian origin. Mm -hmm. He was putting people at the top leadership of al-Qaeda who were all his lieutenants, Egyptians. And people started coming up and saying, hold on a second. You guys are talking about Palestine. Where are the Palestinian al-Qaeda leaders? You're talking about you're talking about Iraq. Where yeah. are the Iraqi al-Qaeda leaders? And so this is the question that the Zawahiri is going to have to deal with. With bin yeah. Laden at the head as a Saudi, it was a very unifying statement. Zawahiri is not a unifying figure. Okay. So will he be accepted by the rank and file of al-Qaeda? Well, big question there. Hey, Mick, I understand you've got something more to add? If I could just go down a couple of key points that were revealed in this briefing we had, sure. which just wound up a couple of minutes ago. Uh, they're telling us that they have gotten many golden nuggets of communications leading to the identities of other key al-Qaeda figures. Uh, and, you know, if they've got those communications nailed down, they probably also have a good idea of uh, possible locations. They do describe that compound as an active command and control center. Huh. Despite had, uh, what had been said for years about uh, Osama bin Laden being primarily an aspirational figure, uh, they say he was, in fact, involved strategically, 
tactically and inspirationally in planning and attempting to carry out al-Qaeda attacks. Uh, there was uh, uh, an interesting question about were the Pakistanis aware that Osama bin Laden was there in Abbottabad at that compound? And you have to, the, the briefer was very precise in the language. He said essentially that there is no evidence that the Pakistani government had any awareness of Osama bin Laden's presence there. But he used the term Pakistani government. When mm -hmm. I specifically asked, does that include the ISI, the military, he repeated Pakistani government and really physically just turned his attention away from me. So it, it, just by the body language and the actual words he spoke, it appears that there may be somewhere in this evidence some connection to people within the ISI and the military, which of course is a huge bone of contention and has tensions rising between the U.S. and Pakistan. Incredible. And also, Mick, that will fly in the face of the the perspective offered up by the Pakistanis right now that uh, suggests that Osama bin Laden was penniless, that he was unable to do any sort of direction from this compound. I mean, what the United States is saying is exactly the opposite of that, that he was certainly in command and control, if not ideologically, on a very practical level. And just a couple of more quick points. When, when we talk about ISI and military, they're not necessarily monolithic uh, organizations. Uh, and and uh, other, other sources have told us that uh, there's no indication that leadership in either of those organizations may have been aware, but they're talking about people down lower in the chain of command. Yeah. And I Mick, I, I want to tell everyone what we're seeing here. This is video number two, everyone, where you see uh, Osama bin Laden. He's watching himself. I'm assuming that this camera is going to pan a little bit, and you'll see right. him right there. And, there right, he and is. You'll, yeah. And you'll see, right, you'll see him there with this stocking cap on and the gray beard, which, again, the briefer said, this is the condition in which they found Osama bin Laden with hmm. this gray beard as he strokes it with the other hand while working the uh, the controller like like most American men watching sports on the weekend, <laughs> right, uh, right. quite frankly, as he's flipping the channels to find reports about himself. What they do say, they're not aware if this is live TV, although it does look like a satellite menu up on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and at one point, you can see many of the news networks, including Al Jazeera and the like. Uh, but they do say that uh, uh, this, it, it, they cannot confirm obviously that uh, this was at the compound because of the immediate surroundings but some of this equipment apparently was observed so uh, there's no question according to some officials that we've been talking to recently uh, that uh, this probably is very contemporaneous and uh, and that he was there at the compound yeah uh, Mick, I also want to confirm that we have been handed, literally, just in terms of our NBC News perspective, we've been handed a DVD on which these five videos are compiled. So for anybody watching this, we are just playing this straightforward. So if you just stay with us, and we're going to play it all right here for you. But you'll see at different points coming up on your television screen what looks like a DVD menu. That is what it is. We click from right. the first DVD, or the first video, rather, to the second in which we are right now. And, and they are relatively short videos actually and again the sound was taken out uh Primary, according to the briefers, uh, because they did not want to use this as further propaganda uh, to to yeah. spread uh, the the word and and the message of Al Qaeda. But I can tell you that uh, also that in the evidence that they found that there was still a very in according to the briefers there still was very an intense interest and motivation on the part of Osama bin Laden, certainly, but al-Qaeda, uh, to stage uh, massive attacks against U.S. transportation, hmm. U.S. infrastructure, uh, speaking specifically, too, of American targets, although those specifics uh, were not revealed here today. Yeah.